JT, uh, start with you just after a couple of days to reflect. How do you look back on both the incredible season you guys had, the run you went on, and also the way it ended in games six and seven? Yeah, I think it was a fun season. I think we learned a lot about ourselves as a group. And you look back at the, uh, you know, getting the guys together early for camp and stuff, I think it really paid off. You know, I thought our team was really close this year. We got better as we went, you know, learned along the way and came up short. But I think it was a really good learning experience for a lot of guys. Thatcher, what can you tell us about um, what's happened with you the last few weeks, the initial injury that uh, held you out of game two against Nashville, and then how close you might have been to returning had things gone differently in game seven? Yeah, I mean, um, probably, you know, the hardest thing I've, I've had to go through as a player. Um, well, the play, uh, you know, obviously we've been through some tough years here and finally get the opportunity, and uh, it's always tough watching. So, um, yeah, it was really hard, but... Uh, I was uh, really close to, to coming back and, um, you know, I was looking to, to probably be available for, for the next series had we gotten to that point. JT, uh, wondering, I mean, you guys had a great year. A lot of guys had career highs. It was very, you guys are very healthy during the regular season. What's the challenge of rinsing and repeating and doing, having a, another great regular season to follow that up? Yeah, I think that is the challenge in itself, but I think the, you know, the whole point of creating a culture and DNA as a group is that way you're not thinking about that stuff. It just becomes part of the way we play. So we're going to stress that again going into next season. And, um, you know, we've we developed a bit of a standard for ourselves as a group. And I think that <clears throat> once you have that created, it's easy to fall back and, you know, where what the baseline is and what you expect out of yourself and the teammates. So, um, you know, it's well-deserved. You know, we want to still be playing, but the break, uh, take some time off and then we'll start ramping up again at the end of summer. Tyler, you're obviously contract up. How would you like to return to Vancouver, I guess, is my question for next year. Yeah, I would love to. Um, you know, what What we've been able to build here uh, the last year and a half, uh, I think it's really special to be a part of. It's an unbelievable city. Uh, the fans were, um, you know, quite amazing in the playoffs it was uh it was something special stepping out uh for every game and uh I, w I would love to be back uh question for tyler what have you seen uh what has been the biggest growth of this group over the last couple of years where we saw you know from 2020 to last year it was kind of um downward trajectory but then you guys were able to bounce back after this year so what can you talk about the growth of this group overall yeah i mean when the changes were made, uh, I think it was January last year, um, you know, we found out pretty quick, uh, you know, the standard and the culture uh, were going to change and they needed to. And I think for guys that were here, I think everybody should be pretty proud of just buying into, uh, you know, where we were trying to take the group and burying our head and, and working. It's, um, you know, it, it's pretty special to be in the position we're in now, uh, looking back to where, we, where we've come from. And, um, you know, in saying that, we just want to keep getting better and, and you know, continue that buy-in mindset to where we just keep improving as a group. Elias, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about what it's been like for you to come in uh, right at the trade deadline and, and go on this run with this team here. No, it's been a lot of fun. Um, obviously, a great group of guys. Um, obviously, came in at a good time and, and got to know a lot of guys during the All-Star weekend. And, and uh, you know, I had a lot of fun here. Um, obviously, we fell a little short, but, uh, you know, I thought we... We all should be proud, and, and it was a good experience for for everyone to, you know, push uh, push uh, Edmonton for 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 seven games in in round two. So I mean, it was a uh, was was great. It's no secret that you're a free agent heading into the summer here. What are you looking for in a deal? And did you have enough fun to return to Vancouver? <laughs> be really specific. Yeah. <laughs> Years in salary. <laughs> No, I don't know. I mean, uh, obviously, next next uh, next couple of days, uh, probably talk to my agent and and go from there. I mean, it's it's still pretty fresh, and and uh, uh, so I haven't even really put a thought into it. Uh, JT, yeah, you're hiding back there. Um, 
I know that uh, you and Quinn and, and the leadership group really kind of dug in last summer, right? And, and had talked to each other about making this season different. And, and obviously we saw it was. I know um, talking to Patrick Alvin, he says, you know, it's a great season, but it's important to remember you lost your last game in the second round. How important is it now not to be satisfied and not to be complacent or think, well, we did it this year, next year we'll cruise past 100 points again. How much, how much hunger and intensity does there need to be to take yet another step? I think that, uh, you know, I can't speak on behalf of everybody, but I hope that, you know, that taste of the playoffs in San Vancouver in May and what it's like to play in game seven, you know, puts a hunger in a lot of guys' stomachs and um, shows that how close we are and um, at, at such a quick turnaround, I guess, from last year. And, um, you know, we have a, we have, at the end of the day, we have a really good hockey team and we have a lot of good qualities. And these opportunities just don't come around very often. I've learned that and, uh, in, over the years of my career. And, you know, I was spoiled with playoff hockey as a kid. And then all of a sudden you go five years without it. And then I'm, you know, 31 years old. And it's, it, when you look at it like that, it's, it, things happen quickly. And I just really hope that, um, you know, that is going to be a challenge is not taking it for granted and raising the bar again because uh, we could feel good about what we did this year. But at the end of the day, we still lost, like you said. And, um, you know, for me, it makes me want to work even harder knowing that we're a goal or two away from Final Four, right? So it's going to be a good test for us. Uh, Thatcher? Uh, just based on how your last few seasons have gone injury-wise, would you support limiting your workload in the regular season? Um, that's not really up to me. So um, I'm sure uh, you know I'll sit down with um, Ian and the rest of the coaching staff and um, evaluate kind of the best way to move forward with that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, uh, we'll see. And Elias, uh, as you head into the off season, how much weight do you put into culture, fit, coaching when you decide where you want to play next season? Yeah, I mean, obviously a lot. Uh, you know, um, obviously I really enjoy my time here, and, and uh, like I said earlier, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, obviously we'll fall a little short, but um, there's a really good group here, uh, a lot of good players, and. And uh, obviously, we would like to play longer, but uh, um, you know, yeah, there's a lot of aspects in in the play center. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, question for you just about the coaching staff with guys like Adam Foote, Sergey Goncha around, and this whole staff. It felt like this is the best defensive style we've seen from this Canucks group, especially this core of players. Um, with those coaching, with the coaches that you guys have, how beneficial are they for you for just not necessarily changing your game, but finding the best part of your game defensively? Yeah, they were they were awesome. Um, I've said I've said it a bunch, but uh, you know, especially when talking about our decor, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of guessing for us stepping out on the ice. Uh, you know, the, they held us very accountable. Um, they'd come into the rink every day uh, with constant reminders, um, things that we can get better at. Um, and you know, I thought I thought that communication and that approach uh, from from Footer and Gaunch uh, on the back end, you know, helped all of us out. Thatcher, one for you. The very nature of your position puts a tremendous strain on on the body and and the movements that you guys have to make in today's game. When you talk to Ian, do you have to change anything? Uh, structurally in your game or is it more off-season maintenance how do you approach the off-season um yeah i mean i think uh you know there's there's a certain way of looking at it you know going into you know next season you know maybe i can tweak a couple things um system wise but you know i'm not going to try and reinvent my game or anything um you know obviously i i put a lot of work in in the summer and during the season um, maintenance wise and you know that's part of the frustration when you know something like that does happen uh, knowing how much work you put in to make sure that doesn't happen um, so you know just try and keep learning and growing in that area and um, 
you know, do everything I can to, to stay healthy. Can you take something from it? Like, you're not an anomaly. I mean, goalies around the league <clears throat> suffering the same ailments. Can you take something from that? Like, I'm not this guy who's injury prone. It comes with the position. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't feel good regardless, um, not being able to play, uh, especially in the playoffs. So, um, I mean, it's it's a physical sport. Anyone can get hurt. You know, obviously goalies are, you know, probably have a little bit different um, injuries than the, the players do, but, uh, you know, they happen and, and it's something you got to deal with. JT, uh, you know, 100-point season for you. Obviously, you've, you've done a lot of good things and um, a lot has been made this year about your personal growth and maturity and you've kind of downplayed it at times saying look a lot of good has gone on here and you know we're winning and maybe that's why but have you been able to kind of see where you're at in your career and and your importance you know as kind of the emotional heartbeat of this group and how you've taken that step <clears throat> yeah I, I guess I really do believe it's a fine line like you know when you're winning uh, my emotions accepted and when you're losing it is certainly not so I just think I, that's why I downplay it is, you know, I, I am who I am. And I just think that I, what comes to mind is the staff here has helped me embrace who I am instead of run from it. You know, you know, I, it was good that I'm kind of wearing my heart on my sleeve and a little louder, but it helped me, you know, channel it. And it's not like, hey, don't be like this guy. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I don't look into it that much. I'm just trying to do my job. And uh, if I do my job, it gives our chance a better, our team a better chance of winning. And if everybody does that to a man, I just think it makes everybody look better. Thatcher, uh, can I ask you about the the goaltenders that played in your place? And obviously, you developed a really close relationship with Casey. So, but you also went through a similar situation to maybe what Artie goes through next year. There was a time when you were asked, hey, "More time in the American League, or would I rather be here?" And you wanted to be here. Um, how do you see that situation playing out? And just talk a bit about what those guys did when you weren't available. Yeah, I mean, I can't say enough about both of them um, stepping in like that. Obviously, Artie was uh, fantastic, um, you know, played his ass off uh, for this group. And, you know, I tried to talk to him as much as I could. I didn't want to get in his way or, you know, be overbearing. It's it's a lot on his plate. But, uh, you know, I, I felt like I was able to, to kind of chat with him here and there. And um, even if it's just... Uh, uh, good morning, a, you know, a, a tap on the ass or something, um, you know, it might help him out. But, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what's going to happen next year. Um, obviously, that's not my decision. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to get really close with Casey. And, um, you know, we, we have kids that are similar age and, and our wives are, are close as well. And, and that's been great this year. So, um, yeah, we'll see. And just GT looking at the power play in the playoffs were there things you guys realized now that you could have done differently you would like to try to institute for next year are there are there lessons you can draw from this moment yeah no question like we you know the power play was disappointing I mean I think that we all would agree I don't know what the guy said earlier but I mean we had chances to change the course of games and we didn't and inevitably that's you know our habits weren't good well, you know their habits were better than ours in the especially in the Edmonton series I think that they outworked us. It had nothing to do with the puck luck or anything. Um, you know, they didn't let us enter cleanly ever, and they're wasting a lot of time. I don't know. We just we we uh, our standard or whatever you want to say about the power play could get to another level, no question. And I think we all know that. And uh, we could have been a bigger part of the playoffs, and and we just weren't effective. And we I just talk about creating. It's not about the goal all the time. It's just creating momentum for the team. And I feel like sometimes we suck the life out of the building, and that's. It's on me. I mean, that's I uh, take a lot of pride in the power play, so we'll be better.